I see a whole different part of them inside of this building and it inspires them so much to create new material and try new things and take risks. Bringing young people into places like this, places that they probably wouldn't, some of them would never see otherwise or have the uh, opportunity to explore, gives them more freedom to unleash their creativity in different ways. These sites are really important to so many different people because whoever you are, you can come here and you get the experience of art and history and heritage. You've got these big massive pictures, these big massive rooms. Every single item in this room was pretty much planned and made by somebody. It had to be created by somebody who had a skill for it. My masterpiece is being put in the same building where all these other masterpieces are. They own it by being here, by being in residence, by living in the rooms and by eating their dinner here and by playing in the hall and by creating here. Teenagers want to express themselves through the arts. You're actually learning about the history, but then you know it's going to lead on to something creative and like when you're there, your mind is buzzing with ideas already. What we specialise in is going into a space go and going into a place and meeting people and making work about them and their interpretation of a place. We work in a collaborative group devising way. No one writes a play and then brings it in and we perform it. It's about unlocking what's inside us. So going, okay, you're the story, you're the storyteller, you're the author of this. So what do you think? And that's actually really challenging to give the young people the confidence to feel like that they can say something about something historic and it then be relevant. So one of the first things we've been doing was breaking down what our assumptions are and where, and where we fit into this building and, and into history. We're a physical theatre company and normally we will work for a very long period of the time to train a sense of uh, physical performance and, and authoring stories with our, with our bodies. We're doing a little sharing the day after tomorrow, so it's a very brief period, but just to go, okay, so we've now understood what this building means to us, but how do we interpret it with our, with our bodies? I want you to go back to yesterday, and I want you to pick something from Oak House that inspired or interested you. One of the interesting things about this project is that I've used a lot of visual stimulus and because there's a wealth of visual stimulus around, um, when, I'm doing my, um, when I'm doing my creative tasks and I'm asking people to select something, they're selecting something that they wouldn't usually see. So they're having to kind of like engage with something that's, not, that's maybe alien to them. It starts to open up a whole new kind of like plateau for creativity because it's like I have to engage with something that I've never engaged with before. <laughs> I mean it's a wonderful place to work and you get a lot of um, great inspiration from the building. Out of the young people that are involved in the project, some of them have involved themselves in really in the fabric of the building, the photographers and things. Others have been involved in the, uh, the creating a narrative around the Arboretum. 
been doing some great work. In my group, I've got uh, two young people who were very interested in, in experimenting with their cameras and photography. So I realised that we needed to find a technique and a context for them to work with, with pure light. You can have a reasonably affordable camera and put it in the hands of a young person. They can, they can understand that they can leave the shutter open and, and, and let all the invisible light through. And that's making the visible visible, so they're amazed at what they're seeing. The interesting thing is there's a lot of mythology and tale telling about the kind of ghostly ethereal nature of those things and the kind of transience of the light and the kind of transparency of that thing has allowed, to me that's the narrative that's kind of coming out of there, is, is it's almost like shadows of the past that have kind of come into those images. These sites are really important to so many different people because whoever you are you can come here and you get the experience of art and history and heritage and it's completely isolated so that you go from the real world and snap back into a piece of history and you're creating something new. The longer you're here, the more interested you get and you just notice little things about the building and it just continues to go on and on and you find out more and I found out more today and we've been here for five days so it's just so fascinating about what you learn. Hi everyone, as Sue said, my name's Lucy. I work for the National Trust and I work as a curator, which basically means that I care for the National Trust properties. I interpret them, research them, that kind of thing. I was invited here today to talk to the young people, young leaders, about historic houses, um, what they are, how they developed, why they're still here, and actually, why do we care? Why do we keep them? It's very difficult to know how to pitch a talk like this, especially if you haven't met the people beforehand. Um, I was very worried uh, about making it too patronising. I didn't want to make it patronising. At the same time, I didn't want to use words that were going to alienate them or to, to push them away from the subject matter. So when I described the word primogeniture, I, was, I took a big deep breath, but they got it. They absolutely got it. And do you know what? Um, I think that I could have stepped it up several gears and they'd have still met me every step of the way. And that was really interesting. Their response to what could be considered, I suppose, quite dry subject matter was brilliant. And they were really sparky, really interesting to work with. We see a lot of these, these buildings and they, they use as museums and things like that to capture it, but you don't really know of the history behind them. I, f I found it amazing to know that they had like over 350 buildings that they saved. Um, information like, you know, the whole the death tax, like taking up to 80% of uh, inheritance from people. Like all this information is really, really, like I just thought it was really engaging. Um, a lot of the time when you have question and answering at the end, there's like an awkward silence, but a lot of questions were asked. When the question comes at the very end, what do you want to ask? Are there any questions? You're always ever so slightly terrified. Um, is there going to be a complete silence? And actually, in this case, there wasn't. Hands shot up and they were asking me fascinating questions, the questions that go straight to the heart of the conservation debate. And that was fascinating because then that sparked me. I wanted to tell them more. They responded to that and we got some fantastic conversations going. And I was, I was, really, I was really enlivened by it. So I thought it was fantastic. Well spoken. After the event and after the room had cleared out, um, some people came back and they wanted to ask some questions. They wanted to know more about what it meant to be a gentleman in one of these houses and what it meant to be a lady. We're part of the spoken word group and what we're trying to do is trying to work out what the recipes were to be a 16th century lady and a 16th century gentleman. So using the portraits and as they are, you know, your 16th century selfie, you could kind of gather that kind of information from them. Those are loaded questions, there's, there's any amount of history behind those and so it got me thinking too and just talking about um, what it meant to be a lady, what it meant to be a gentleman um, and I could, see, I could see the creative juices starting to flow and it was a, it was a really, it's a, it's a really kind of perceptible thing, you know, that switch where people just, you can see the interest in somebody's eyes sparking up and you think, right, I've got you, I've got you, you'll you're, you're always be interested in country houses now because you've, you've, you've experienced it, you've experienced the little thrill that comes with learning a bit more about it. Very much I, you know, I, I thought, I thought, when I heard you talking, I thought, she knows, I've got to ask this question, so yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to hold it here for a bit. Concentrate frame holders, concentrate. She has defeated the everlasting struggle that has strained and drained the life out of so many before her. I've seen her grow. She's now free. 
But what about me? Where do I lie? To live her fluidity. To be a better me. To live as a lady. Yes, yes, it's good. It's good. Hey, close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was wicked, wicked. Well done, guys. Well done, well done, well done. And then the frames move first to make the square. And then who moves next? The people that are inside the frames first. Yeah, and who moves after that? Someone that's not familiar yet, Amani? Audience. The audience watching in, yeah? This project is quite particularly important for us because it's about researching contemporary views of history um, and not just us who know our own interpretation of history being able to do things but talking to young people and finding out about what they think of history. I've been working with Nathan from Tangled Feet and a group of incredibly talented young people um, who have worked really, really hard to understand this building and understand what it was like to live here around 400 years ago. And they've created a few little scenes for you um, around the themes of power, growing up, haunting and celebrity. Know your place, they say. But what if you don't feel that? Skrilla, it makes the world go around. But freedom is priceless. I think it's absolutely essential that young people get involved in these places. Absolutely essential. They can't survive without it. That, um, and do you know what, even more, that these houses are for everybody. Now that I've experienced it, I realise how big an impact it can have on the young people inside of it. I think it really brings it to life for them and finds and they find it easier to engage with it than they would have anywhere else. I think it's it should be done a, a lot more and it makes a lot more use of these buildings that might stand here irrelevant really and just makes them more important. Our visits were very influential and it's just going to places like that is something that's always when you think of ideas for your own work, it's something that's always going to come back. And if you're thinking about history, this is such an experience that you can't forget. You could see that feeling arising within him that he'd never really recognised before, which was one of like the excitement of creativity. And I remember that as a, as a young artist, feeling that for the first time. And, it, and it's, it's almost an entirely new emotion on a new spectrum. And uh, it was great to be able to just you know, be able to be the catalyst for that, uh, the delivery of that emotion for it. My opinion on heritage houses and how it relates to the arts has definitely changed throughout my time here. Before I thought it was completely irrelevant. Um, I thought because the houses were so outdated it just wasn't relevant to the young people. But creating the drama pieces that we have and getting to know what it felt like to live here 400 years ago has really made everyone feel a part of this building and like we do own this hall. In terms of engaging young people in heritage sites like this, um, the project like the one that I'm on right now is a good example because not only do they get to explore the space, uh, they're, engaged in a create, they're engaged in creativity in a place that is full of creativity. You know, so it aids the creative journey that they're on. And even if they're not necessarily creating on the theme of heritage, they're creating in a, in a heritage site. So therefore, they 
they, they, they feel like their sense of personal ownership through taking part. So when they go to another building like this, they're actually not, they're actually not necessarily engaging with who's in the painting. They're engaging of them being in the space. And that's probably the most profound thing. They're authoring a personal history rather than joining someone else's history.